Hey, hi everybody. This is me, sort of wasted from fasting with Ramadan. <laughs> but this is the uh, the Bundes Vanguard Circle gang here, just missing Comrade Net. And uh, we have uh, too much to concern us, actually. We've got this damn genocide the Zionists are propagating with intention, without relief and with a, an acceleration and an expansion of the war into uh, Syria now. Iran, which is basically Iran, because that's, that's, it was this, the Iranian embassy in Syria, which is sovereign Iranian territory. And that's really, that's the dangerous part of it. Yeah, that means that the Iran could retaliate by sending a missile from Iranian territory directly into is Israel territory. Maybe hit Netanyahu's house or something, you know, like <laughs> that'd be nice. I wouldn't doubt if uh, the West has something to do with the uh, bombing in Russia as well. Yeah, yeah. I I hadn't heard I hadn't heard about that. Well, the the CIA, you know, uh, trains uh, and Mossad, you know, trains a lot of the uh, terrorists who operate in Ukraine, and then they, yep. you know, have allies that they work with. Uh, from uh, that uh, that province from which they came from, that my memory is cannot remember, and uh, there there seem to be willing, you know, witnesses to what they went through now, and have oh, indicated that they were getting paid from a source uh, and uh, contacts with Ukraine that they were supposed to meet up with for their to be stashed away, and they got intelligence uh, from. Uh, from uh, probably American satellites, you know, to say, you know, that these guys, you know, we're all meeting together in this place. And so, uh, I, I mean, uh, that's the other one, you know, um, the bombing of the uh, of the consulate, uh, that's probably linked to uh, U.S. CIA intelligence. But in Moscow, <clears throat> um, there was uh, a link between... Uh, between them and the Ukraine, between those terrorists and the Ukraine, uh, and that's acknowledged by a couple of the uh, by a couple of guys who were captured. Yeah, these terrorists were from Dagestan and Russia. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, who wants a war? The United States of America, Israel. Oh, yeah. Iran doesn't want a war. Iran has been rather sort of complacent sure. and quiet, wouldn't you say? They've been trying to do it. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, they basically tried to distance themselves from Hezbollah. Was it like two weeks ago uh, uh, from their actions? Uh, well, because if, uh, Iran, well, for, for, I mean, I mean, I have a lot of friends who are Iranian and Iranians are, are really, really smart people in general, very, very educated, very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. And Iran knows, obviously they know, anybody I think would know, but especially Iranians, they know that they, in, in any war with with Israel, they would lose. I mean, I mean how could they win? Um, yeah, they don't have, a, a, they don't have nuclear bombs. You know, Israel would be willing to use nuclear bomb on Iran if they were getting a bunch of missiles coming over and they were hitting and getting through their Iron Dome system. They would go, they'd freak out and they'd send over a nuclear missile. Yeah. I think I think, I think, they're, I think they're even hoping for that because especially people, th when, when they think of nukes, they think of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but those those were much, much different than the nukes that are are used now. They're, they're much more targeted mm -hmm. and... Um, uh, they could send a a nuke like directed right at Tehran and it would basically just hit Tehran. It, it might have some effect in the surrounding area, but not as much as yeah, many tactical people. nuclear weapons, yeah, are meant for yeah. Mass murder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, and 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 Iranians are I mean, they're very good people. Um, There's also 25,000 Jewish Iranians living there. That's true. Mm. Mm. I, 
I think um, the propaganda around Iran is quite vile because I, I hear I hear how much the government has a. I mean, I hear how anti-Semitic they allegedly are, but from what I hear, they actually uh, they actually have all three um, monotheistic religions legal over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the reputation that they got for anti-Semitism was uh, that of uh, Ahmadinejad, who uh, called together an international conference to uh, p- present doubts about the um, Nazi Holocaust of the Jewish people. And uh, unfortunately, uh, a, a rabbi from the Naturikarta, Rabbi Weiss, he went there and he actually, you know, lent his 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 sympathetic you know posture to Ahmadinejad with whom he met and was recorded you know as having done so so you know they blew all of their credibility in the Jewish community at that time and now Ahmadinejad is such a goof you know that he's gotten himself banned from any further elections because he's so um so disdained by the Iranians hmm. But in, but but the problem is it's it's it, it, in terms of the world community it's really too late because people don't people don't pay attention to those kinds of things it, that kind of thing it's true but it's not newsworthy what was news newsworthy is what happened and so hardly anybody is paying attention to what's happening right now all they remember is that yeah yeah and, of us of of our generation and your generation yeah that's what yeah. uh that uh, you know uh, people remember nowadays you know this the new craze is the um, atrocities horror stories that they've built up around october the 7th i've looked at the worst of what happened then and i've seen some videos and one uh, crazy video of a woman being dragged on a on a on a, mo- a moped a small motorcycle with hardly any clothes on uh, but it was by civilians you know they were not hamas because civilians poured across the border there, you know, to do whatever they could. And they went there primarily to loot, and they did. But uh, I don't think there was any mass rapes, as a, alleged. Uh, I've seen that. I've heard a testimony of uh, of one released hostage who said that she was sexually harassed uh, by a guard, Hamas guard, who was replaced by another guard who also sexually harassed her. So, uh, but the other hostages, women hostages that have been released, that have given interviews, have not talked about that. What they've talked about is how uh, their partner or their other hostages with whom they were were killed by the Israel uh, um, helico- uh, tank fire in the in the kibbutz, and uh, uh, that they don't talk about very much. So uh, I don't think that the allegations of the mass rapes, you know, is going to hold up. Uh, in spite of uh, a superficial statement by one UN, UN official uh, with no evidence, uh, no proof uh, to the contentions being made. So it's going to, you know, crumble away. You know, the rationale that the Jewish people like here in Montreal that I meet on the street every Sunday at the vigil, that's going to crumble away. And I think that it has already started to do so. One guy who was screaming at me about rapes, you know, and all this... Uh, uh, you know, I just said, you know, whatever. Uh, by the way, um, the weapons of mass destruct, the weapons of mass destruction. Have you found them yet? <laughs> and that was it. You know, he just left. He didn't have any, anything else to say. Oh, what a tiring battle this is! It's been going on for six months. And you know, I go out there on Sundays for three hours, no matter what the weather. And then it takes me like two days to recuperate <laughs> and then get my sleep cycle back. It's like really, you know, like draining. And now, of course, you know, in fasting for Ramadan, you know, it's twice, twice the effort. But it's getting me, you know, more into shape, you know, cleaning out the cholesterol and all that. I'm doing medication for that, too. Yeah, I'm going to take care of that. Now, I've got to live another 15, 20 years. You know, there's this problem is not going to be solved, you know. The next five years or anything in the next five years you know i can see that uh palestine will have you know official recognition from many countries 
if not the United Nations, you know, rather soon. Not the United States. Not the United States. No, no. And uh, not and Israel not. may will likely be suspended from the uh, General Assembly. You know, they only need a, a majority of nine votes in the Security Council to pass such a motion, which then goes to the General Assembly. And it, I don't think a veto counts because it's, uh, I don't know, there's a different rule for that. So they just need nine votes, you know, to suspend Israel. And there it is, it's gone. And then all the Jewish people are going to freak out who are sympathetic to Zionism. I wouldn't call them Zionists, you know. I mean, their designation, you know, uh, in, in in rigorous terminology would be non-Zionist because they don't live in the state of Israel, which is misnomed, you know, because Israel is not the name of a state in any case. Israel was the name of the Jewish people before the state of Israel. So, you know, like, when they shout at me, Am Yisrael Chai, saying, you know, long live Israel, you know, I shout back at them, Am Yisrael Chai, Hamadinat Velo Yisrael, so long live the Jewish people, the state is not Israel. And then they pretend not to understand. <laughs> and then they shout some more and then they leave. You know, either, you know they, they stick around to hear more because they're intrigued by what I've said, or they, they give up right away and they run away before they hear any more nonsense from me. It's fun. It's fun out there. And last week it was, you know, no attacks. It was just sort of, a lot of dialogue, practically continual dialogue the whole three hours. My mouth started to come apart. <laughs> Do you have uh, Palestine solidarity demonstrations in each of your areas? Do you hear anything about that? Well, there was one in Nashville about a couple months ago, but I didn't have a car then. Oh, Nashville. Wow, that's impressive. Nothing nothing ever happens here this is like this is out I'm, I'm the wilderness well yes. yeah i mean i mean the, 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 we we have interstates here but the interstates are, are not connected to the rest of the interstate system yet um oh. and 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 so, so basically this is like an extension of mexico i'm i'm two miles from mexico Oh yeah, I was I was listening to um, Al Jazeera report about migrants coming to the American border. That's freaking out uh, Biden, who's turned anti-migrant now. Even though, but I think it's entirely for racist reasons. Because, you know, check it out. The American economy is rolling. They need more workers. The migrants want to come in and work. And uh, why are they not being allowed in? It's not because of capitalist reasons. I think I've mentioned this before not because of the needs of capitalism, but because it would disturb the balance of demographic forces in the United States civil society. Because the combination of uh, Anglo-Americans, who are 21%, and German-Americans, who are 20%, only make 41% of the population now. Now, if all of the illegal, you know, machica, Immigrants, you know, who, who number some 11 million, get their citizenship finally. And then the migrants, you know, get legal sort of, you know, uh, status and eventually get their citizenship as well. Well, that block of voters, you know, they're finished. That's it. They've lost. That reminds me somewhat of the phrase, the, they didn't cross the border, the border crossed them. <laughs> yeah. Just a moment. My son is calling me. Hey, hello, Sally. Hello. Uh, je suis en train de faire un enregistrement avec de, deux camarades à l'État de à ce moment-là. Uh, okay. Moi, c'est parce que je t'appelle parce que je viens de prendre le chaise. Oui. Uh, I'll be right back. Gardez-le pour le moment. <laughs> Pas problème. <laughs> okay. OK. À bientôt. Au revoir. Well, I mean, uh, people talk. People talk. Uh, that was uh, my son. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I yeah, raised him as a Quebecois, the first Jewish Quebecois, the first Jewish kid to go to a francophone school, which was just before that. You know, the Catholic school system, which forbid any Jewish people from going to their school. <laughs> so my son Celie was the first. 
but it was difficult, very difficult for him to endure that, even though it was an alternative school within the French school system there. Yeah. Yeah, that was my son, Andrew. So, yeah, everything is going okay. He was the first Jewish kid to go to a French school here in Montreal. Really? Because before that, Jew Jewish people were forbidden to go to French school. So they couldn't learn French. And so they spoke English. And then the French got angry with them because they only spoke English. You know, like double whammy. Terrible. And then finally, the Catholic school system changed its name to be just the Francophone school system. And my son was the first Jewish kid to go there. Harassed a lot. But anyway, yeah. Nice pipe there. I have one like it. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, people, the thing is out there, living here in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, I, I get all these calls from people all the time saying, uh, is, is there, are there major problems where you are? You know, you know and, and I said, I always say no. I said, Nobody here even talks about the border here. And I, I honestly, I wish pe people would more, but for a different reason, because I, I would like to see more pe people come in. About three months ago, there was a, uh, a raid um, by the Border Patrol that people around here, including Mexican-Americans, well, most people here are Mexican-Americans. You, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the minority. I, I'm called an Anglo, which I despise being called an Anglo, which as an Ashkenazi oh, Jew, but I'm called an Anglo. Uh, I'm going to register him. Wait. Well, the moment, I just can't put this take off our back. On a peu par now. Okay, bye. Yeah, but I mean, I get, you know, and, and so the um, th there was a raid on, on a place I just literally came from, the the um, the convention center shopping district on. A, I, don't, I don't know which I have an, I have an idea which store because <laughs> because the guy mentioned this to this guy and he's went into kind of panic mode. But <clears throat> I, I think it was an ice cream and cupcake shop. And they um, they found that the, that the workers in that place did you know had um, forged documentation, and so they they sent all the um, you know they did raids all all over that entire area. Um, now, no no people from no no Mexicans come in this area to work anymore because they're all terrified. And and the economy of this area has a has as a result of that really really suffered um, because mm. I mean these pe people were coming here they were work now it's in a way it's not it's a shame because they were getting they, they were not being paid minimum wage mm. but but the, but they were working they were here they were certainly getting paid more here than they would be paid in Mexico. What were they getting paid then? Um, I think about two dollars an hour. Wow, slaves! That's slave but, yeah, labor. It is really, really, really. But 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 now they can't come. But they here send home. money back to their family in Mexico. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, or, well, uh, Honduras no, or Ecuador. No, they go back and forth. It's just two miles away. They just drive back and forth. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, they just come. They would come and work for the day, and then just go back home, back, back, back to. Uh, uh, just back. There's to migrant home. workers, you know, who come into. Uh, Quebec as well to do the harvest, you know, in the springtime. And uh, the migrant workers come from Mexico and they're paid, they were paid, you know, last I heard, you know, three fifty an hour. So maybe they're paid $5 an hour now. Hmm. And this is what keeps, uh, you know, the, uh, the economy going here is, you know, like um, super exploitation like that. Otherwise, it's you know, same, food would it, be much more expensive, you know, and people wouldn't be able to, to buy food. Yeah. Because yeah. the profit margin that they use, you know, the corporations, you know, big corporations, you know, that have a, a monopoly, they have a like a 300% profit margin. They charge three times as much as what it costs them. Yeah. For food, you know, it's not regulated even. It's incredible. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I know some of these people because I, I mean, I, I go to Mexico all the time. 
and I, I, and I, and I meet with these people and, um, and, and most of these people are, are, are in horrible poverty. This one person I met, um, every, every time I see him, I give him 40 bucks American. You know, they prefer American money to uh, Mexican. And, um, you know, he, he was coming over here and, and working and now we, he, he says, I, I can't take the risk. Um, so, you know, he, he, he begs and he, he gets odd jobs here and there, uh, but not that much. And it's, wow. it's, you could, uh, what could be done is that they could be uh, helped to organize like, uh, like in the big grape strike that happened in California. Remember that? Cesar Chavez. I was, I, I was a part of it when I was 12 years old. Oh. I was a member of the Students Democratic Coalition, and our project was working in solidarity with Cesar Chavez. And we picketed a supermarket and uh, trying to get them to stop uh, selling California grapes. Oh. And, and we also handed out petitions to people. My parents themselves refused to sign it because they 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 said we don't want to end up on some list. <laughs> I, you know, I I don't know. That, yeah. That's what they, that's what they said. That they As if they weren't them. already on a list. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't. My, the the weird thing is, my father was a, um, he 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 was a floor manager for the Distributive Workers Union in New York City, which was the only pro communist union in the U.S. Wow. Um, not pro syndicalist, you know, pro communist. Yeah. And 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 he was um, uh, and yet he didn't want to sign it. I, I never understood what, understood why. But he, he he said, well, I've still I still need to be careful because 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 I have other things to look out for. And I said, Dad, you're a member of a communist union. He said, no, I, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to sign the thing. So and then and then unfortunately, I had a neighbor who was psychologically unbalanced because her, her grandfather would beat her all the time and she burned down that supermarket which is unrelated right. but yes uh, that... okay forget about that so <laughs> yeah. he, he was of the generation that were intimidated by the mccarthy area the mccarthyists you know had a great effect upon them but we only yeah. have five minutes left you know so uh, uh let's get uh, a report in from andrew i love this your flags in the background there thank you you know, so, Germany very nearly, you know, like had a successful socialist revolution, you know, when there was, there was a dual uprising in both Berlin and uh, Munich by yeah. two different, you know, political movements, you know, they had it going there. They actually uh, briefly established what was called the Bavarian Soviet Republic. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And mm -hmm. it was uh, Adler, who was an anarchist, and uh, and uh, another guy, I think he was a, was he a Bundist? No, social democrat, social democratic, you know, prime minister with uh, Adler and anarchist as a as a minister or something or other. Is that what it is? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, and they were both killed, of course. Yeah. Same thing happened to, uh, I believe, Karl Kautsky and Rosa Luxemburg. Yeah. Karl Liebknecht. Karl Liebknecht. Yeah. Kautsky yes. was yeah. the previous generation. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Luxemburg was th thrown off of a bridge and she will or actually she was hit with a uh, a rifle i felt bad and killed and then thrown off of a bridge and her body was found three months later uh, damn yeah. yeah i i i love rosa red rosa yeah she's, she's i've read her uh stuff you know her economic work as a political economist is superb she did a critique yes. of uh bernstein you know who was arguing that the cyclical uh economic crises you know predicted by marx you know were no longer valid for capitalism because capitalism had learned to uh adjust itself but she you know did an analysis in which she pointed out you know that uh in effect bernstein was only talking about you know short-term cyclical management but long-term cyclical crises you know were inevitable she proved it in the economic terms brilliant well she had a lifetime battle with him i mean <laughs> the, the the two of them hated each other or at least she hated him and 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 for good reason his evolutionary socialism was 
it's uh, really such an opportunist you know these yeah. pigs yeah, he you was know, an with, opportunist yeah that's exactly yeah, what using the working class you know for their own aggrandizement and, and promotion that's basically what it was about mm -hmm. we've only got about I, a minute left yeah go one thing i should say about the future of socialism is that uh Previous generations have made mistakes, but uh, I believe that our gen like the, this generation, the next generation of socialism, has to learn to, how to uh, re like rectify them in order for the revolutionary struggle to be successful. Yeah, I totally agree. And if it's not uh, you know learned, then it won't be successful. Yeah, you know because. You know, there's been so many, you know, errors that have been made before, you know, like I was just referring to the um, documentary on Ernest Mandel, you know, who was the head of the Fourth International. They didn't even support the Algerian Revolution, never mind yeah. Libya, when I came to speak to him about it on the way there, you know, in the end, 1973. They just sort of, you know, like dismissed the Third World as if, you know, they were inferiors. They were racist. These French chauvinists, national chauvinists, penetrates right through the Communist Party and right through the Trotskyist Party there as well. It really made me, you know, like pessimistic about the capabilities of a revolutionary leadership coming, coming about, you know, that, uh, but that's the past. So that's like you why say, I Andrew. With, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's on. why I identify with Maoism and Bundism, especially mm -hmm. Maoism, third worldism. Yeah. Ditto, ditto, ditto. China is so great when it comes to Palestine and Gaza now. China, you know, has proclaimed the right of, you know, uh, armed struggle on behalf of the Palestinians, <laughs> you know, like, okay, you know, and, but uh, what, what can they do? You know, like they need to, they don't need the American Navy there, you know, building a, 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 a harbor, you know, for, for a, a little bit of aid and for um, a, a, an emergency exit for the Palestinians to leave their own country. No. The Chinese Navy and the Russian Navy should be there, you know, bringing in aid in mass. About and, and bust right through the Israel Navy. I've actually seen some uh, anti-communists when I was in when I was at my grandmother's neck of the woods recently. Huh? I went to my friend's house and they had a huge sign with a with the word socialism on it, with uh, the uh, this red circle and a line through it. I asked them. <laughs> I asked them if they could explain what socialism is, and they said Vladimir Putin's a socialist. <laughs> he's a fascist. He's, he's an fascist. orthodox. He's an orthodox Christian. First of all, second of all, he's a pro-capitalist and says so. <laughs> he supports uh, who? What's that guy? Idyar uh, is his favorite philosopher. That guy who wishes that fascism. Started in Germany, not in Italy. Oh, Dugan? Uh, no, no, no. This is a uh, Putin's favorite philosopher. He's been dead for a long time. Oh. Uh, he li lived around the World War II period. I, I, I'm, Idyar or something like that is his name. I think I'm probably botching his name somewhat. Well, he's he's not a he's not a doctor of political science. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was just an intelligence officer, <clears throat> and he, I guess nobody else did a job as good as he did. So there he is, you know, but he's loved now. He got what, 71% of the vote overall, like over 90% in the uh, Donetsk and Lugansk regions. That was good. I liked uh, the Russian uh, Red Army, so-called, coming in there to support the local militias who were battling off the fascists who were coming there to commit a genocide on their own people. That's what I think is how, is what happened. I don't want uh, Russia to go beyond the Duneb a river, though, if they do, then they're turning into sort of an imperialist uh, onslaught on yep. Ukraine itself. Yeah, Donetsk, Donyev yep. River is is the uh, is the red line, as far as I'm concerned. Very good. Okay, great. Okay, I'm going to put this up, and I'll send you the links. We'll put okay. it up uh, both on the Bundist uh, Movement uh, channel and on my channel, both. So yeah. here we go. We're on our way. Uh I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Comrade Net couldn't be with us, but next time. Hello, hello Comrade Net. Yeah. <laughs>